we're at the Pennsylvania Philly Museum and we're going to um, go inside. Come. So you guys, we're going to be doing this game. I think it's a game. I did like two scenarios already. Now I'm going to go back to one to show you the first one. Okay. Scenario one, bring the story up to speed and go to, yes, I got it. You don't need to worry about this one. The second scenario is really hard because at the um, end, there's a cow. And you have to drink the horn and put the brake down. Come on, speed up. Go slow. What is this, Sarah? I'm, um, I'm, oh, this is the, um, controller that makes you go fast and slow. Come on. Oh, I'm going slow. And, and what about that? This one? This is your brake. Okay. Can I switch it off? But maybe I should put it on. Just in case. Oh, and by the way, it changed. The speed limit changed. It's 15 miles per hour. It was the same, I think. No, before it was 20. Okay. Oh, what? <laughs> Cargo things. I think. This is the speed limit. Morning. Take a door. Yeah. Tickets. I'll take them all together. They're <laughs> <laughs> all facing the right way. Thank you. Thank you. Watch your steps you get on. Yeah. So which one, which one is the uh, speed and which one is the brake? That one over there is the speed and that one over there is the brake. Okay. But I've never seen that tool. So that turny thingy that wasn't on the tool game is the turner. Like the, um, you should ask the guy. You should ask. What is it? You can ask the engine driver what our dog is have. Yeah, you can. He's so friendly. during the summer ah it, it came from rio de janeiro oh and see a lot of the trolley companies during the summers uh-huh and on weekends in the summers people weren't going to work so what they would do is they would have open air cars like this yep that they would take them out to places like kennywood or west uh westview had a park out there and so these were more fun cars picnic cars 
Yeah. Uh, this car was actually came from Rio de Janeiro. I was doing it with my hands. Okay. That car came about in about the 1920s. And back then, you operated the brake with your right hand with a lever. You have, I had the accelerator there, uh, with the left hand. And then I had a dead man pedal down on the floor. Here, we're talking 1949. So we jumped ahead a couple of decades. And it looks more like a car. There is a bar that he's gonna that you hold on to because there's no steering wheel, but you have an accelerator pedal. You have a brake pedal. You still have a dead man, but it looks more. It, it operates a little more like a car. It's I'm going to take my mask off. It's only required on the trolleys, and it would probably be easier to hear me without it. Yep. Um, in here, what I want to do is just talk a little bit about sort of the history of transportation. Back in the early 1800s, when you lived in the United States, if you wanted to get around, about the only choices you had is you could walk, you could ride a horse or a mule, or maybe you had a cart. But you were traveling generally on roads that weren't paved like they are today. You're talking about dirt roads. And especially in winter, that could be a mess. You were bogged down in the mud. And so people were always looking for ways to transport people and there were companies that were in business and they would run wagons and they would run what were called omnibuses, which were large kind of vehicles which could handle many people. But again, they were oftentimes trucking through the mud. So at that time, in the middle 50s, there was a lot of development with railroads and people thought, well, why not put these kinds of cars on wheels, steel on steel? And so they came up with the streetcar. And this is an example of a streetcar. This is not a trolley. Mm -hmm. And it ran on the south side of Pittsburgh on rails. Um, it was, they don't know the exact year, but it was built around in the mid 1870s. And you can see a picture of it here on the south side. And again, it was pulled by Cost. mules or horses. Here we have an early Pittsburgh car. Now, because this is a powered by electricity, you see a huge jump in the size of the car. So this car back here from the city of Philadelphia is actually also not a trolley. It's a subway car. The car here is one of our work cars. Looks a little strange, but it has a specific purpose, which if you look at the picture, uh, here, you'll see what it is. This is a, a basically a snow plow. Uh -oh. Now, a lot of times when a company wanted to do a um, uh, uh, set up a, a trolley operation in a town or in a city, part of the contract was you're going to keep the streets clean, especially for snow. And so this was an example of a work car that was used to clear snow. I stopped at this car for two purposes. One, this car came from Johnstown. And I point it out because it's a little smaller than some of the other cars, which the point that I want to make is that not only did large cities like Pittsburgh, Philadelphia have trolley systems, but also smaller towns in Pennsylvania did too. And the second reason I stop here is just to give you, if I have good aim, demonstration of how we yeah. power. As I said, um, most of the cars that you've been seeing are either public transportation cars 
or a few more that you're going to see are work cars. This is a much, much different type of car. Uh, this is what's called a parlor car. The Toledo Traction and Lighting Company owned this car. Um, this was not for the everyday passenger. This was for the executives because they also owned the trolley system. And what they would try to do is get investors who might be interested in somewhere along the trolley line setting up a factory or doing a suburb so that they would then get the business of transporting people back and forth to work and home. Mm. And so you have a really nice, you have a meeting area, you have a lounge area, uh, they even have a typewriter in there where somebody could work. And then here, behind these oval windows with the stained glass, you would have one would be a kitchen, one mm -hmm. would be a bathroom. And essentially, you could go out all day on the rails. These are also trolleys. In the early 1930s in the United States, we had a big problem called, called a depression. And a lot of people lost their jobs. And many people used the trolleys to go to work, to go to school, to go shopping. Um, and so with the Great Depression and people losing jobs and losing income, ridership dropped off tremendously. So what happened was the presidents of various trolley companies and electric companies, and a lot of times electric companies owned the trolleys, trolley companies because they supplied all the energy to run them. They decided that things like that car didn't look too modern. And so one way to try and build more modernized cars, more efficient cars, and save money was to come up with what, a uniform design because in many cities one city may have a design for a car that's completely different from another design and so they tried to come up with something a little more uniform that incorporated more creature comforts that had more safety features and just looked nicer to ride down at the end here uh, we have two work cars. Again, cars that are operational for us to use. The car, the green car here on your left is a ballast car. Now, ballast is all those little rocks that you see between the rails and between the ties that hold them, help hold them in place and help with drainage and all of that, that's ballast. Mm -hmm. This car is unusual in that most ballast cars are side loading or side dumping cars. When they go out to where they're supposed to fill in the rocks, they will dump off to the side and somebody has to shovel it in between. This has a mm. center dump. And so it just dumps it right along yeah. the rail, the inside of the rail. So this, this is actually a very unusual car, and we're lucky to have it. Yeah. The other car here is a crane car. Again, this is a trolley. You can see the trolley pole. We use it. You can transport ties out onto the, uh, out, um, where you're laying track. Um, you can transport uh, rails if necessary, but it's actually completely functional. Okay. All right, we're going to make one more stop before we get back on the trolley. Raleigh and head back to the visitor center. Do you know what that is? What is that? Good for you. A lot of people your age don't know what that is. They go, what's a funny looking face on the wall? Okay, everybody, let's go this way and we'll hop back on the frog.
don't know.